How cool would it be to have any outlet in the shop or garage on a remote control? Hey y'all, my name is Nick and welcome back to Stay Woods Co. There is nothing worse than starting a CNC job and forgetting to turn on the dust collector or having to walk all the way around the machine just to go turn it on and then having to come all the way back here and start the program. So there's got to be a better way. Now this doesn't have to pertain to a dust collection or even CNC, but how cool would it be to have any outlet in the shop or garage on a remote control? Now for me, the pressing issue is the dust collection on the CNC. I have to run around the table every time to turn it on and half the time I forget to turn on the dust collection so I'm doing it in a hurry. Plus, my dust collection plug is way back there in the corner behind this massive wood rack and I hate to get back there, especially in a hurry. I'm gonna knock my head off by that wood rack. So, there is a solution and it's very affordable and I'm gonna show it to you right now. So I picked up this wireless remote system from Amazon for only about $24. It comes with the wireless relay along with two remotes. Now this is a 30 amp setup. It'll work all the way from 90 volts to 264 volts. So your 110s and 220s, 240s will work perfectly for this system. So the range on this thing is supposed to be really good. They say up to 100 meters. So for us in America, that's like 330 some feet, which in a shop or garage, you're never gonna try to push that limit. But it's cool to know. It's cool to have. So I want to be able to put this outlet, which is a 220 outlet, on a remote. That way I can leave the cord plugged in at all times and I just trigger the outlet itself with the remote. Now, if you do not feel comfortable with electricity, obviously hire you a professional. But with a couple easy steps to remember, this will be a safe and very easy switch. Yeah, switch, remote. We'll do it. We'll fix it. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure that your power is off at the outlet. You want to cut that power off from the panel. Now, the easiest way to test this is by picking up an AC voltage detector. Green means you're good. Red means there's something dangerous in the box. Always test all of your outlet plugs. Make sure that you're hot. You can always have one lead that's hot and one lead that's not if it's wired incorrectly. 220, both of them should be hot and obviously the ground is not. So let's go turn this off at the breaker. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch off the breaker that goes to that outlet. If you're not aware of whether or not that was the outlet for it, always go back and test it again. You can pick up these little magnetic bowls from Harbor Freight or Amazon. There's a link in the description below. I find it really handy when working with electrical or anything that has to do with small parts to always put your screws and bolts and things that you don't wanna lose in that metal bowl. And obviously I can just stick it to the outside of this outlet and it works perfectly, perfectly fine. So what I am gonna do now that I have this open is I'm gonna test for the power one more time. I wanna make sure that there are no lines hot anywhere in here. And pull these out. Now for 220, both of these are hot. You have hot wires on both sides of the poles. So I'm gonna cut these just to give me some nice new ends to work with. You're gonna strip away the plastic coating from the wire. Now for 220 wires, I ran 10 gauge wires. The bigger the, the smaller the number, the bigger the gauge of the wire is, and the bigger the gauge of the wire, the more amperage and voltage that can run through it. So the lines that have been coming into the outlet originally are gonna go into the input side of the relay. You wanna always make sure that those are nice and snug and there's no chance that they're gonna fall out. So what I did was I went ahead and cut some more 10 gauge wire that I had laying around the shop um, as a pigtail to go from the outlet to the relay itself. All right, so now that we have that on the outlet, we can run the two lines um, for the output from the relay. So we'll just secure that down in there tight as well. And then we're gonna close the little cover and we should be good to go. Now, the one thing that I always do is I always wrap my outlets 
with electrical tape. Is it necessary? No, but does it make me feel better? Especially seeing how these outlets live in these metal boxes. Yeah, if I had a problem and I didn't put that on there securely enough, I would have a fear of it touching the side of that metal box and arcing. So I always, always do that. So I am going to tape this one as well, but first I want to test it to see if it's actually going to work. I'm going to pull this little wireless receiver out. We'll tuck that out from outside the box here shortly. So when we get back to this breaker, we have to understand that all of this is now hot again. So you don't want to touch anything on this outlet until we've tested it, make sure it works. We'll go shut it off at the breaker one more time and then we'll come back and tuck everything in. Now, this relay looks to be auto configured from the company to this switch. You can hear it clicking on every time we hit the button. Now, let me go shut the power off and let me show you something else about it. Okay, so I flipped the switch again. Again, I'm gonna make sure that everything's nice and off, and it is. The instructions say that if you push this little button here three times in a row, the green light's gonna illuminate. Then you just simply push the on button one time and it will sync with this box. But lucky for us, both remotes came set up for this unit already. First thing that I'm gonna do is I am gonna go ahead and tape up this relay so that I know I'm safe. Again, this isn't absolutely necessary, but it gives me peace of mind knowing that it's not gonna come apart and it's not gonna move. And I can easily take it apart later if I have to. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna push all of this wiring back into the box. You're probably not gonna have a whole lot of extra room here to put all this back in the original box. So what I did was I picked up this extension so that I can bring the power outlet itself out away from the box and gives me that little bit more depth. The little radio antenna for the relay receiver is gonna stick out of this little notch in the outlet itself. So now all we've gotta do is put the cover back on and we'll be good to go. So for about 30 minutes worth of work and about 25 bucks on Amazon, we now have the ability to turn on any outlet in the shop that we want to with a simple remote from anywhere we want. So I hope this video helped you. I hope you can implement this into your shop anywhere you want. There's so many possibilities with it. It could be endless. But until next time, I'm gonna get on this project. I'll see you on the next video.